Hello and welcome to today's video. This is Confessions of a Yarn Addict, episode 72, I think. Um, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person, and I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. You can find all the links uh, to everything I'm going to talk about below this video. Today is episode, I think it's 72, uh, of the Confessions of a Yarn Addict. And I will be doing a bit of a catch up, telling you what I've been up to, and also talking about Wonderwall, which was this last weekend. So today is Wednesday, 26th of April. Um, so Wonderwall was last Saturday and Sunday. I'm hoping to be able to film this and edit it and upload it. So it's on YouTube on Thursday, 27th. But there is a chance that won't happen and it won't be out till next Tuesday. So um, we'll just see how things go this afternoon. I've started filming a little bit earlier than I planned to, so hopefully I'll have time to edit it and upload it as well uh, by tomorrow afternoon. It's the uploading bit that takes a long time. So I'm going to talk about Wonderwall, uh, what the event was like. I've got some footage to show you. I got quite a long clip. Um, at the beginning of the second day we had a wander around and I filmed quite a bit and that's about a kind of five six minute clip so I'm going to leave that to right at the end um so if you don't want to watch it you don't have to um I've got some purchases which were not from Wonderwall and I'm also going to tell you about some of the new stuff that's in the Yarn Addict online shop and what I've been knitting while I've been away so um and also a bit of preparation for Wonderwall so let's start with the preparation first I was actually going to try and film enough of the preparation to put together kind of like a show preparation vlog but that didn't happen um but there's lots of things that uh go into getting ready for a show I am a fairly very very small business micro business I would say I don't do very many shows this year I'm doing two big national ones and one small local ones possibly two small local ones I'm not sure yet um definitely one small local one in the town I live in and um I've done Wonderwall obviously and then I'm doing Yarndale in September and at Yarndale I'm also teaching a workshop more about that um when I have more information so it is uh shows are busy and the lead up to shows are very very busy there's lots of stuff they need to be doing I don't keep a lot of stock in my online shop between shows because I don't have the space to store it I've only got this room and it's not that big and I don't have any more storage space so I've got the shelves behind me and I've got some more shelves over there that I use but I don't have a lot of space um, to store loads of stock between, between shows so my stores are probably on the smallest side compared to like all the indie dyes and things um, I used to be an indie dye many many years ago and I spoke to a couple of people on the show who like were customers of mine when I was an indie dyer, which was quite exciting. Um, and when you dye yarn before a show, there is so much to do because you have to plan out all your dyeing schedule. So, and you've got to make sure you get it all dyed, all dried, which is the biggest problem, all reskained if you reskain your yarn, twisted, labelled, packed, counted, everything. At least I only have to uh, decide what you want to order and order it and um, when it comes unpack it and repack it and price it and that's about it. So I have a lot less to do but there's still things to do. So one of the first things I did when I started planning for Wonderwall was to sit down and decide what I need to do and um, then go through an order. I filmed a little bit of a clip of uh, me um, clicking through the Nipro catalogue uh, to decide what to order and I'll show you some of the things I ordered in a minute.
so I ordered a few things from the Nipro catalog um which I, I've just organized them into here um and these I sold obviously a lot of it but I have some things left these are going to go in my online shop um I organized them because I got this tray which I don't really use so I organized them in here because I thought it would be easier when I'm packing orders and things to have it fairly well organized in there so um there were some things left over some things sold quite well some things didn't sell quite so well but i do have a few things left over so i'm going to show you some of the things that are going to be in the online shop um let's start with this one this wasn't actually new in fact i wish i'd ordered more of these because um i only have one left so this is a short pin from nip pro they are wooden ones i don't want to take this out of the packaging i sold them for 10 pounds um i don't know if this said what kind of wood it is no it doesn't so i had probably about five i think and i got one left so that's good um i will have to order some more and remember to order some more for the next show i got some of these stitch markers they are heart shaped they are bigger ones you can use some ones say for example four millimeter needles any smaller needles maybe they're a little bit big but they are ideal for slightly bigger needles as well i don't know what they officially go up to but i've used them on bigger needles um but yeah i really like those they're pretty um heart shaped ones and then i got um some tape measures i'll show you one that i actually opened so that i could have it on display so i think i showed these did i show this before wonderful as well i can't remember but you basically it's got a button on the back i do prefer these compared to the nipro mindful ones the mindful ones are green i think they're a bit bigger and they're a lot heavier these are much lighter and the button here works much better so when i press that button it shoots back in much quicker one of my favorite knitting tools is my uh, row counters i love these i have them in every project i'll show you the one that is in one of my projects in a minute love these they're brilliant um i sell them for six pounds a lot of places sell them for more than that uh so and i got quite a few left because i ordered quite a few of them so if you want one of those do um check out the website and then another row counting option are these rings now i actually do have one in one of my projects because i took one out i ordered one in my size um specifically so i could wear it so they used to do on nipper i think they still do black ones and i have a black one and the black one i think the largest size was like size 11 uh, which was too small for me i could just about get it on like the tip of my um thumb but these uh rainbow ones are newish ones i think uh and i can get them on my ring finger i can't get them on my middle finger and i can also get them on my thumb so when i'm actually using them to count uh rows i actually put them on my left thumb because then as i'm knitting i can just turn it and then carry on knitting uh, whereas if it's on my ring finger it's a bit more awkward to turn my hand around if it's on my left thumb i knit and the um bit that counts like one two three four five so you count so hang on so on one side you count like the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then when you get to ten you move the other side so when it's on here i can move the outer bit quite easily i might do another video showing it a bit more closely um but i really like it it's quite good fun um so i've only got two on the website i got one in size 12 which is the largest size and then i have one in size 10 which is a bit smaller um the sizes are on the website do check them out i will link to them below and if they sell out i will order some more um so i got two of those i did sell a few of those this weekend um what else have we got so we've got this one i think oh there's two left of this one okay so i have one that i opened it hasn't been used i just opened it to display it at the show it's a um needle gauge it's silver plated it's got nipro mindful collection it's got nipro on one side and the mindful collection on the other side one side the size is a millimeter it goes from 1.5 millimeter up to eight millimeter and then the other side is US sizes from triple zero to 11. So I really like that. Um, comes in a little 
bag. You can obviously use this pouch for other things as well. That's ten pounds. I've got two of those at the moment, and then I also got some um, stitch markers, which are very pretty. So these are also silver plated, and they're kind of like chakra stitch markers. I must admit, I'm not into that whole kind of chakra type of stuff. Um, but if you are, there is like a chakra guide thing there. It's in English and it's in German. Um, and the stitch markers come on this little um like a, a, a stitch holder so if you want to put any stitches on hold you can use one of these this is quite a short one then it has uh loads of stitch markers on there they come in varying sizes so you've got two that are quite big ones and you've got two tiny ones two small slightly bigger ones two slightly bigger ones so they come kind of in one two three four five different sizes two in each and each one has like a different um chakra symbol i guess it is i don't know how easy it is to see but they're all slightly different i hadn't actually noticed so they all came in different sizes so you can use right from like tiny needle sizes to big needle sizes um again they come in a little bag and they're silver plated i have a few left of those um what have i not mentioned okay yeah this one uh scissors um they come in a pouch like that which is quite thick and sturdy um do quite like that and they are folding scissors pull them out like that they're a little bit hard to pull out but i guess that's so that they don't slide out unintentionally open them they're quite sharp quite good for cutting yarn obviously rose gold rose gold and then you push them back in again and then you can put them back in the bag perfect for traveling the um blade is short enough to take on a plane i think the um limit for planes at least in europe is like six centimeters and these are definitely way shorter than that plus they fold down so even if you just want to pop it in your project bag like this they're not going to accidentally cut your knitting or you can pop them in here you can also fit other things in here like sewing needle tapestry needle a few stitch markers things like that so you know if you're going on a trip or just going out and about you can just put all the things you need in there if you only need a few things like a few stitch markers tapestry needle the scissors things like that that can all go in here and it goes in your bag this is quite thick fabric so they're well protected but i really like that i might have to keep one of those for myself where did that go there and then the last thing um which didn't sell very well but um i think i made this because people didn't quite know what they were for but um i will definitely do a bit of a video on these to show you what they're used for so they're little tiny crochet hooks I'm definitely keeping a set of these myself. See if I can get into this one and get them out. Come in three different sizes. Um, for you have like a needle tip on one end, and then a crochet hook on the other end. So perfect for picking up dropped stitches. You could even use it as a cable needle um, at a push if you didn't have a cable needle but they're really designed for like fixing mistakes picking up stitches things like that and they're called repair hooks and they are made of wood and i really like those i think they're really good i will probably do a little video on those maybe um do a little short on this youtube channel and a reel on my um instagram so i think that's it um so this will all be on the website i'm just going to move it because it's balanced a bit precariously on my desk and i'm just really worried about it Kind of falling off uh, so i'm going to move that so that's on my website now and i'll pop the link below so apologies my camera is slightly angled really struggling to get it to actually stay on my bed so i one of the next jobs i need to do for wonderful is to go through all my samples and see which ones need um blocking my samples are in a bit of a mess after a show they tend to just get chucked in a box and left so i think this is actually the wrong box so i'm going to go through this box first I've got another box in my office some of the samples that look okay they're just a little bit creased i will just basically iron them <laughs> and probably should not do that to shawls but i will actually just iron them um just because of time this one is Dakota. That could probably do with blocking again because that's not been blocked for a long time. So the ones that I think could do with a proper blocking, I'll put in one pile. 
The ones that I think could do with just ironing, I put in a different pile. Some of them, once I've just kind of like folded them neatly, are okay. If I just give them like a shake and fold them neatly, some of them are okay. This one I'm definitely taking. Um, yeah, it's a, one of those jobs I don't really like doing every single time. But it's got to be done. It's this one. Oh, this one's a peacock poncho. That one I need to... Um, peacock feathers? Peacock feathers. Which are called, called the peacock feathers. But um, I'm not going to block that one. It's lost its tag. But I am going to iron it. I think most of these probably need ironing. Um, that one, I will take this one. But I don't think I will bother blocking it. Because it probably won't be displayed. What's this one called? Valletta. It's always difficult with shows because I never know quite how much space they have. That one, I don't have the yarn for this one, so I may not actually take it. Or I'll take it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Probably put that on the maybe pile. This one, I don't think I'm going to take because I haven't got the pattern for that. That one, I'm not going to take because I don't sell the yarn. Well, I do still have some of the yarn. This is the six carat. Um, yarn which is actually in the reduced section so I will take it with me this is called Spanish fan maybe I will take it because I do have some of the yarn left and I'm selling it off quite cheaply at the moment because even though I love the yarn and I think it creates beautiful shawls even though it is a bit creased it's not a very popular yarn so yeah this is my Least favourite part of preparing for a show. Most of these need ironing. I think after the last show I did was Yarndale last year. And I think after that they all just got folded together as best I could at the end of the show. Even though I was doing it very quickly. And then basically shoved back in here. This is poncho. I might take this one because this one's quite a big poncho. And I might wear that if it gets cold. Um, that one I'm not going to take. And um, no, I don't think I'm going to take this one. I'm also going to make a note of which shorts I'm taking to make sure I've got the patterns for them. And then I'm not going to take, and we'll take those shorts. So, um, I think I'll put the shorts I'm not taking back in here. And then I need to go and find the other box I need to go through as well. So when we arrived at the show, um, I fancied putting off, bringing my tripod and putting off my camera and doing like a time lapse. But because I use my mobile phone to film on, it's a little bit awkward to do that. So I'm just moving something because it was about to fall over. Um, but I fancied doing a little time lapse just to show how we transform the space. So the space, I wonder, will they have these kind of like shell things? They're just white. We had the smaller stall, so we had like three walls. Um, some only had two, like corner spaces. We were in the middle. We had really poor lighting where we were. We were in the same space as last year, and last year lighting was a problem. We had some fairy lights. But I can't remember when I bought them. I actually bought them, to, I think, to use in the house. No, I did buy them for Yarndale one year, maybe. I can't remember. Or maybe last year for Wonder What. I can't remember. But I bought them at some point. I don't know where from. 
and they're really pretty but they don't give out a ton of light and we'd set up and we would just be worried about the lighting situation so we finished setting up we didn't finish everything completely but like we had everything set up we just had to like do prices and pretty up things a little bit um and then we decided we really had to find some new lights i did try and buy some more fairy lights before we left for wales but i couldn't find anywhere i went to two kind of big local shops uh where they sell kind of like everything and i couldn't find them and we were thinking we need to get some better lighting because the spot we were in is quite dark and we had that was a problem last year so we were trying to work out what to do and um Bill Wells, where uh, Wonderful is, is a small town. I didn't really want to go into the town and try and find it in the town because I wasn't sure what shops were there. It's not a very big town. There doesn't seem to be a lot of kind of like big out of town shops like B&M, The Range, DIY stores, that kind of thing. Um, but we have a shop near us called Traeger Mills, which is kind of like, um, it's actually just outside the town I live in. Um, and they have one. In where I live they have another smaller one in Falmouth in Cornwall they have a big one uh, in um, Devon and they have a new big one in Merthyr Tydfil apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly uh, in Wales and we'd driven past it on the way up so we were like let's just drive down there I mean yes it was an hour away and we thought probably a little bit silly to drive that far we probably could have found something a bit closer but it's a very rural part of wales and we thought they sell everything it's a big shop we can probably find something there so let's just jump in the car and drive down there because we got to wonderful quite early so we were set up fairly early like middle of the afternoon we got there midday just after midday we were set up like middle of the afternoon so we jumped in the car drove down to method tidfil went to um trago got some new lights uh, which worked very well and they weren't the most attractive lights but they did work and had something to eat there as well in their coffee shop and then drove to our airbnb in hay and Wai. um so i filmed a little bit from when i was setting up um just a tiny bit so i will show you that now so we've arrived at wonderwall and found our store and um tables were here when we got here and i've been on book then and we've unloaded the car some some most of that and I've started unloading all the yarn. The first thing I'm doing is just dumping it on the table so the fourth line DK goes here with the lace weights over there. And then we go try to find space for a door, which is always the most difficult thing. But well, I don't know how many hours we're gonna be here, but probably three hours I reckon. We'll see.
So let's talk about what I was knitting while we we're away. So I've mostly been working on my on two projects. Uh, one is my knitting for olive um, sweater, which I've made a lot of progress on. So I think last time I filmed, well, I know last time I filmed, because I put a marker in. So I know last time I filmed, I was here where that marker is. So if I hold it up, um, it's knitted in the round to the underarms. So up to where that marker is, it was knitted in the round. So that was like most of the body up to the underarms. And uh, last time I filmed, I had taken this off the needles and put it on like one of these um, tubing things. Um, and I'd blocked it and I tried it on and to try and decide whether it was long enough or not. And I decided I want to add a little bit more length. So where was we? Where were I? Yeah, hang on. So that's where I was last time and I knitted that much more. I think it's about five centimeters. Hang on. Let's just grab a ruler and measure. Yeah, it's about five. Hang on. Yeah, about five centimeters. So I added another five centimeters and then I split for the front and the back. And then I finished the back. Um I finished it, I think it was Monday night I finished it. So the back is done. Um I kind of guessed a little bit at the length of the back. So what I'm going to do is, um, I always leave the back on uh, hold anyway, because I always like to join the shoulders using a three needle cast off. So they're back on the try on tubing thing. And then I started working on the front and I've only done that much on the front from that green marker. So I'm going to take this yarn skein marker off and put it on the front so next time I film I know how far I've got um let's just put that on the front quickly I need to double check before I finish it that I'm happy with the neck width because I didn't do that properly I haven't actually written the pattern yet I've done some rough calculations I have a spreadsheet set up but I haven't actually written the pattern yet um it's very sketchy so far, very rough so far so I need to really write up the pattern before I go any further but I also need to just double check that I'm happy with everything so when I finish the front I'm going to just not join the shoulders I'm just going to pin them together and try it on again to make sure I'm happy with the armhole depth and the neck width and the front neck drop and things like that before I join the shoulders and then I'm going to pick up stitches and knit the sleeve now you see that Oh, hang on there that way there that's um the next ball i need to join in because i've just about run out of yarn um and i thought i had i think i've used four balls so far and i'm pretty sure i had six because i had two in norway or, or two in norway and then I, i'm pretty sure i ordered four from beautiful knitters so now i got that one over there there we go um which i don't know why i just found that on the shelf when I was packing for the wall and I just stuck it on there and I haven't unpacked the yarns that are going to be there yet they're out in the hallway um they've been unpacked and counted but they're just in the box in the hallway um so I must have another ball somewhere and I'm not quite sure where it is and that's making me worry slightly so I'm going to see if I can find it this afternoon because I need to start that ball this afternoon and if that's the last ball then I need to get on and order some more but I'm pretty sure I have one other ball somewhere I'm not 100% sure that that will be enough I may need one more I think it might be enough because I've only got the front to do and then two sleeves and because it's dropped shoulders the sleeves will be shorter so I'm hoping I've got enough uh, to finish it but we'll see The other project I was working on was my socks um, and I've actually finished one so I'm going to just pop it on the sock blocker I always forget to do that before I start filming so 
you can see it better. So this is the yarn badger. Um, what's the colorway called? It is merino nylon and it's called Surf's Up. 75%, 25% superwash merino nylon, 400 meters per 100 gram and the colorway Surf's Up. And um, where was I? So last time I filmed, I was there where that marker is. And it's knit a toe up. So at the show, I knitted from here to probably about halfway up the rib. Um, so it's knitted in like an alternating rib pattern. Uh, how well that's focusing. Um, so basically, I did five rounds of rib and then I swapped this so that where I was purling, I was knitting, where I was knitting, I was purling. Uh, and I did about 60 rounds on the leg. I probably, I kind of want to. I was kind of thinking I should have done 70, but anyway. And then I did 30 rounds of rib at the top. I was thinking maybe I'd do 40 rounds of rib because I the last few socks I've done 90 rounds on the leg. I kind of wanted them a little bit longer, so I probably should have done 70 rounds of the alternating rib and then 30 rounds of the regular rib at the top. But I stopped the 60 and started the rib, and um I didn't want 40 rounds of rib because it's too long and I can bolt jump it, so it's fine. Um, so I knit until probably about halfway up the rib up here um, on Sunday and then I finished it last night. So last night, because I knew I was hoping to film today, I thought let's just try and get this finished. So I only had a few rounds of rib left to do and then I even picked up the stitches and did the optical heel. So the first sock is done and um, I have actually started the second sock, but I haven't got very far. So that's the amount of yarn I had left from the first sock. And I have my scrappy granny square, granny stripes blanket here. And I'm going to drop the rest of that in there. And then when I finish the second sock, I'll drop what's left of that ball in there as well. Because I split the yarn in two balls when I started. So I didn't have to carry the whole 100 gram ball with me. I could just carry half because um, then it takes up less room in my handbag. When I carry it for out and about knitting, which is mostly when I've been knitting on it. Um, and when I finish this one, I can then hold these two strands together and add it to my granny stripes blanket. Um, so that's how much I've been knitting on the second one. I cast on the toe last night and knitted a few rounds. Didn't do very much. I haven't finished the toe yet. I wasn't sure that kind of felt like maybe I should finish the toe, but I was like, no, I can't be bothered. So, um, that's just going to go in my handbag for out and about knitting. We're going on holiday in um, soonish. Um, I think it'd be nice to finish it before I go away so I can cast off a new pair of socks before I go away. Or rather than taking that pair with me and being like half finished, I'd rather take a whole new pair. Or if I haven't done very much more on it, I might take that and finish that sock and then take yarn for a new pair with me. I haven't quite decided yet. It all depends a bit on luggage space and things like that. So I did do most of the sock knitting I did was either in the car. I think in the car on the way up, I was mostly knitting on my sweater, I think. I can't remember. We went up on the Thursday. Um, it was my daughter's birthday this week. So we uh, went up. My daughters live in South Wales. So we went up to see them on Thursday afternoon. Went out for a meal with them to celebrate Emily's birthday. And then... Um, we stayed at their place overnight, they share a house together in South Wales, and then we drove off from there Friday morning. So I did a bit of knitting in the car on the way up to South Wales, and while we were at my daughter's, I didn't knit anything in the car from South Wales up to um, Wonderworld, because most of it is on fairly narrow, windy country lanes, and I can't knit on country lanes. I can knit on motorway, which is fairly straight, but nothing too windy. So, uh, and on the way home, don't think I knitted much on the way home because by the time we got to the motorway I fell asleep um but I did knit quite a bit at the show um which um I always get a little bit <laughs> when people say they've been to a sh when stall holders say they've been to a show and they've done a lot of knitting I always kind of get a bit like okay so it wasn't a very good show then because if you get a lot of time to knit it's probably because it was quiet and that means that you probably sold a lot less. Um, but the show was actually quite good. So uh, we used to do Wonder Roll for years and years and years. And then we stopped doing it because um, our sales were dropping every year. 
and the last year we did it it was not very good at all so we stopped doing it we didn't do it for quite a few years and then in 2019 i applied to do it for april 2020 and of course because i thought i fancy giving it a try again most people were telling me that it was their favorite show and how good it was and blah 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 so i thought let's try again it may have changed because i hadn't done it for quite a few years probably like five years or something so i applied again i got accepted for april 2020 course that got cancelled 2021 got cancelled because Wales were in lockdown I think we were still in lockdown in England as well um and then last year was like the duo of it from 2020 and I was a little bit not sure about it because one Yandel the year before 2021 was not great um so I was a little bit nervous about it we did about the same as we've done in Yandel 2021 which are the only two shows I've done since lockdowns. Um, so that was okay. I was happy with that. It wasn't great, but it was okay considering COVID and everything. And then Yarndale last year, 2022, was a little, quite a bit better. Not as good as it was in kind of its heyday. We're probably about 40% down on the best year we had. My best show ever, my best two-day show ever was Yarndale in 20. 18 i think and we're probably like last year we we're probably about 40 percent down on that but with everything that's happened I, that's fine and there's so many more shows now anyway so i was happy with that um so i was a bit unsure this year uh, because of cost of living we've had very high electricity and gas prices in the uk food's gone up a lot um everything's gone up people have a lot less money to spend so i was a little bit nervous about how good it was going to be because uh, like i said there's a lot of work to do these shows and uh, it's not all about just what you take at the show it's also like advertising getting out and meeting people and chatting to your customers and followers and things so it's not just about the sales but obviously it is a business and if i don't make any money from a show i can't carry on doing it so sales are important and saturday morning got off to a really slow start by mid it opened at 10 by midday i was like oh, this is going to be a disaster because i we may have had one or two sales in the first two hours it's normal not to get a sale in the first hour because a lot of people turn up and then they wander around and have a look around but it just seemed very slow um and i was worried by midday on saturday saturday afternoon was really busy in fact we actually closed up late because when the show was about to close at 5 30 two ladies walked in they spent a bit of a few minutes chatting and they both actually bought quite a bit um so we made like a two quite big sales in the last five minutes we actually finished like six minutes late i finished serving these two ladies and they walked up and then my husband said I think we were supposed to close five minutes ago and I was like yeah okay great <laughs> let's pack up and go so that was on the Saturday so Saturday turned out to be really good and when I cashed up we actually did better than last year um which was very good and then Sunday started off the same um very very quiet in the morning now the second day is usually quieter and I find that sales are usually lower on the second day and it was very quiet in the morning <laughs> first couple of hours was very very quiet and the last hour tends to be deadly and um like the last afternoon tends to be fairly quiet and it was very very cold i haven't really mentioned the cold but it was very very cold it was three degrees or something on uh saturday morning it was a little bit warmer on sunday but it was very cold considering the fact that we we're at the end of april so i was a bit worried that people were going to go home early and because they were cold and fed up um so I was worried about Sunday. I was happy that we'd done so well on Saturday because I thought, well, that takes a bit of the sting out of it, I guess, if Sunday was really bad. But Sunday, 12 o'clock, I was thinking this is going to be a disaster. And then Sunday afternoon was fairly busy again. It wasn't as busy as Saturday, um, but we did about the same on Sunday as we did last year, I think, which was surprising. So all in all, we were up on last year, probably by about... 25 percent our sales were about 25 percent more than last year so all in all i was quite pleased um it was quite good um 
so I will definitely be applying again for next year. So if you came and supported us on Wonderwall, if you purchased anything, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. I'm so grateful. Thank you very much. And if you came by and said hello and had a chat, thank you very much for coming. It was lovely to see lots of people, see some people from uh, who are regular YouTube viewers and see some people who follow me on social media and see some people from my Facebook group and see some people I hadn't seen for a long time. So it was really lovely. Um, some people I managed to have quite a long chat with, some people I didn't. I saw loads of people from my workshops as well. Both the workshops I teach at Spinny Yarn in Devon and the ones I teach at the Knitting Hotel in Devon and some people who've been in my workshops in other places as well. So it was really good to see people and some people I've known for a long, long time. Uh, so it was really lovely to see everyone. So if you were there, thank you very much. Um, I hope I didn't seem too vacant if you introduce yourself it's a bit overwhelming at shows and people say i'm so and so from so and so, -so. sometimes i'm a bit like it takes me a while before things click in quite often i can remember people's faces but not their names or i know i know somebody or I met them before but i can't remember where so if i was a bit vacant um i do apologize shows are quite overwhelming when you work from home on your own most of the time so thank you very much if you came by and, and said hello so on the second day we got in to the show just after nine i think it opened at 10. so we had a look around um wonderwall is divided into two main halls so there's one big hall which is kind of split in two and then there's the third hall which is in a separate building i have still not made it into that third hall last year i didn't manage to get in there and this year i didn't either I normally have a look around the show at the end of the second day when it goes quiet, but the kind of pack up situation at Wonderful is a bit different. It's quite difficult to get down from the exhibitors car park down to the building to load the car. So Simon actually left our stall about an hour before the uh, show was due to close, walked up to the car and sat in the car in the queue to try and get out. They let all the um, livestock owners in first, so they get all the sheep and I don't know if there was anything other than sheep there, I only saw sheep. I don't know whether there was alpaca and other livestock there as well, but I only saw sheep. Um, they left those out first and then they left all the other storeholders down to the building. Um, and because it's a big show, you can quite often queue up for a long time. So Simon went up um, to queue up an hour before the show closed. <laughs> Obviously, they don't, don't let any exhibitors out of the exhibitors car park till the show is closed. Then they let the livestock people in to take their livestock out before things start people start packing up and then they let their, everybody else down so good thing with Wonderwall is that because of the building you can get quite close to the building and there are doors all the way around the building so you can usually get find a door fairly close to where you are which is really really helpful um so when the show finished I started packing up and I packed up most of it by the time Simon came and by the time we'd loaded the car and packed up everything and returned our tables and things like that, we drove out to the showground an hour after the show closed, which I think might be one of our quickest pack-ups ever, ever. So we got out there fairly quickly and then drove home, which took four hours. So we got home quite late on Sunday night. So I did only have a chance to walk around uh, the hall that I was in. I didn't have a chance to go to the, the second hall. Um... And I didn't even get around the whole of the hall that I was in. There was somebody I really wanted to see who actually came and found me later on. Um, but I missed her stall completely uh, because I didn't go far enough over to one end. So I didn't actually buy anything at the show. Um, there was a couple of stalls on Sunday morning that I thought I fancied having a look at. But the owners weren't there and I don't like looking at people's yarn when the owners aren't there. So I left it and I thought I'll go back in the afternoon and then I just didn't get around to it. Because we were quite busy until Simon left and then obviously once he'd gone to queue up for the car park I couldn't do anything. So I didn't actually buy anything at the show but I did order something which came last week. So let me show you what that is. Um, so this is Pixie Yarn. Um, it is Spring Equinox Semi Solis 2023. So she does a Spring Equinox Club, which I, somebody I follow on Twitter had bought some yarn, uh, bought this set in uh, speckles. And I thought, oh, I like that. So I went and had a look. So it's five, five 20 gram sock skeins, 
425 meters in total, 75% merino, 25% nylon. I'm assuming it's superwash, although it doesn't say that, uh, but I think it is. Um, I got the solid set or semi-solid set. There is a speckle set as well. And um, when we're driving home, or it might have been after we go home, I can't remember, I suddenly thought, oh, I wonder they, because I've been thinking what to do about them. And I thought they kind of go with this skein that I got from Pixie Yarn at Stitch Fest last year. So this is the same base um, as that. And um, this is called Birthday. So I guess it was a special birthday skein, but it's got a lot of the same colours in. And so I thought, I wonder if I can use that in the same project. And then I actually went online and I ordered that same set in the speckle set. It was available, I think it was available in DK or sock yarn. And the sock yarn was a choice of the merino nylon sock yarn and the sparkle sock yarn. And I can't remember, because I did it a bit, whether I got the sparkle or not. I was hoping it would be here before I filmed this, but it hasn't. It has shipped. But, I mean, I only ordered it. I think I probably ordered it Monday. Maybe Sunday. I can't remember. But, um, probably get it tomorrow. So, I'm thinking about combining those in the same project. I haven't quite decided yet, but that is what I'm thinking. I also got another skein, which may or may not go as well. I haven't decided yet. So I will show you that when it arrives, and then I will show you what they all look like together and what my plans possibly are for that. I also ordered something else online, which hasn't shipped yet, and I will not tell you what that is. I will show you in the next episode when it has arrived. In the last episode I did a I was going to do a price draw for a copy of knitting magazine issue 242 uh, I have a separate video on my design in this issue which I'll link below let me just show you oh there it is my design in this issue is black cardigan I've got a separate video on that but in the last podcast episode I said I would do because I've ended up with three copies of this um, I said I would do a price draw for a copy of this so most people have commented um, but I haven't gotten around to actually drawing the winner yet so if you want to win this magazine go to the last episode which I'll link below and comment and um, I mean watch the episode as well if you want to but comment and say you'd like to be in with a chance of winning this and then I think what the question I asked was what is your favorite knitting magazine and which country do you live in um or which part of the world do you live in uh comment below the last video so not this one but the last podcast episode I'll put all the details below and then I will do the price draw next week um Tomorrow I've got quite a lot of work I need to do on the Friday I'm teaching and then we've got a long weekend. So I will do this, the draw next week. Um, and announce a minute in my ne next episode. So thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a little look at what Wonderwall is like. There's a long look at Wonderwall <laughs> for my little walk around on Sunday morning coming. Um, and I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a look into some of the preparations that happens before the show and some of the setup and what I've been knitting and everything. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.